How's it going guys? My name is Eric Van from Butt Cheeks and welcome back to Corpse Party Blood Drive. In this episode we're gonna be doing some of the extra chapters. I don't know how many we're gonna do but we're just gonna start with extra chapter one. This game needs no introduction. Let's just begin with extra chapter one. Last waltz. I'm sure we're gonna see some characters that we didn't see in the main story. Apparently there's an extra chapter with Kizami and some other characters like Sayaka and Naho and stuff. <gasps> and Morishige! We saw him a little bit though but not enough. Okay, so he's out in the woods. This might be after he jumped out the window in the original corpse party. So this would be like what happened after. That would be cool. I couldn't move a muscle on my body. It's as if I were paralyzed. I tried to focus my strength into my arms and to wake them up, but... Come on, Morty Shige, we need more of a struggle than that. I want to hear you s scream, please. I'm not sick and twisted at all. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you go crazy. Okay. Are you still going nuts though, Morty Shige, or what? I lay on my stomach and turn my neck, the one muscle still mobile for me, to see an immediate environment full of broken branches and crushed leaves. That's pretty lucky. Usually Heavenly Host would just impale you with branches. There'd be some cleverly placed traps for you, but no. <laughs> That's too bad. Is it just going to be about him dying in the forest or what? You already know she's dead though. Yeah, this is the scene when he looks at the cell phone and realizes it's Mayu. But your insides looked so warm and inviting, Mayu. Okay, that's that's sick. I take it back. I love Mayu. <laughs> oh, there's Mayu's guts! So someone glued them onto the wall. I didn't want to see Mayu's guts again. Why? Over the course of these three games, we've seen Mayu's guts like six or seven times. Okay, I'm sick and tired. <laughs> that mournful voice playing over my phone so clearly Mayu's. I just couldn't get the sound of it out of my ears. It's haunted my every thought and shook me to my core. Sorrow and anger, hatred and remorse. My head was flooded with wave upon wave of emotion. I'd allowed my own morbid curiosity to get the better of me, using it as justification to disrespect or even desecrate the corpses of countless unfortunate victims in this school. <laughs> Yeah, we know you're psycho. Okay, he's not psycho. He's darkened and he's become like He's not really like this. Although, out of the group of nine that originally went here in here, Morishige is probably the most emotionally unstable, which is why he actually went crazy to the point of, um, you know, looking at corpses and having like a weird corpse fetish. Yeah, she is embarrassed, and she told you that. <laughs> to tell you the truth, this blood splatter could go in a modern art gallery. I believe it. Come on, let's go, blood splatter. We're taking you all the way. You're going to the top. One corpse more than any other caught my eye, however, and this wasn't just some nameless corpse I'd never known in my life, as I initially assumed. She was a friend whom I cherished as I would a sister. She was the light that had kept me moving forward in this dark space. She was Maya... Ma Mayu? <laughs> what? Maya? I was thinking of Fatal Frame 2 there for a second. Mayu Suzumoto. But now she was a stain. Her light had been snuffed, leaving only darkness in my heart. Well, that's too bad. She was a stain. That's not a good way to talk about your sisterly figure. A stain on the wall. <laughs> my... My... <laughs> OK. 
Okay. I know, it's sad. You're coughing, you're hurting. This is like the Morishige crying power hour right here. And we know, we, it's, you're sad, I got it. Oh, it was worth it, that scream was beautiful. Yes! That was a 10 out of 10 scream of anguish. Oh yeah! I cried with every last bit of my soul, penetrating the ugliness of my own physical form as I lay there, bruised and broken and covered in my own vomit. The pungent stench of bile filled my nose. The tears kept on streaming, I was sobbing so hard and through possibly broken ribs no less that my airways had backed up causing me to break out into fits of coughing. Hey ma you, you ma, you're my ma, ma you, you're my you. I'm, I'm a rapper. Sudden gust of wind shook the leaves on the trees around me, chilling my body and soul and filling my ears with the sound of rustling leaves. I had to move. I knew that if I didn't, I wouldn't wither and die here. Be smirched. I would wither and die here. Be smirched by my own blood and the contents of my own stomach. I attempted to stand, but the pain was disheartening. <laughs> I balanced myself on my right arm, and with excruciating effort, I was able to forcibly climb back to my feet. I put my hand on the nearest tree, using it as a crutch with which to support my weight as I relearned the mere art of remaining upright under these new physical restrictions. Glancing back toward the school, I noticed a rusty tub next to the wall. It was full of water from the near constant rain. So you know what- you know what I'm wondering now is like, he's still alive here, and he killed himself in chapter 5, well he jumped out the window, he supposedly killed himself in chapter 5 of the original game, but that was when everything was being resolved. Now. If Sachiko was appeased and Heavenly Host was kind of like shut down, um, but Morishige was still alive when that happened, like what would have happened to him? I don't know. Hmm. Every step I took brought with it a new and more intense pain, but I took those steps nonetheless, approaching the tub slowly and methodically. Unless he died before that happened. I don't know. Would he just been stuck here and he would have died as it collapsed? Or what? I don't know. Hmm. I squatted in front of it and pulled my face close to the water's surface. Cupping some rainwater in my right hand, I splashed my face, attempting to wash up as best as I could. There's the Morishige we know and love. Another gust of wind shook the tree branches, but this time brought with it a gift, a large plastic bag which somehow found its way to my foot and got itself caught thereupon. I stared at it for a time, pondering what paltry favor fate had brought me, but ultimately chose to keep it on my person as I painstakingly made my way back to the school building. There we go, we got some Book of Shadows views going on here, I like it. I entered through the connecting corridor between the main building and its annex and resumed my wanderings through the dark empty halls. The only sound I could hear was that of my own footfalls. <laughs> Well, you know what is cool? Like the Ma he realized he was looking at Mayu's corpse, and it kind of shook him out of his darkening slash insanity. That's kind of cool. Well, a lot of them did, Morishige. Five, anyways. I peered into a random classroom through its broken door, and the first thing I saw was a hefty stack of corpses, each wearing a sailor style school uniform. Hmm. 
死体の腐敗は滞りなく進みやがてそれらは骨になる明日やがてかすみ Well, Morishige, you're probably boned, yeah. As I walked along the old rundown halls, the scent not unlike rusted steel began to grace my nose, growing stronger and stronger as I approached my destination. And then there I was, the point where the hall formed an S shape. And there it was, an unmatched sight that would turn an ordinary man's stomach. Fortunately, mine had already been turned twisted and thoroughly emptied, freeing me to enjoy the view. Ah. <laughs> You come to pick her up, Udo! No, don't touch! Don't desecrate her guts anymore. I knelt before the splattered chunks of human flesh on the wall as if in reverence and opened the large plastic bag fate had bequeathed me. Oh no. <laughs> okay, still a creep! Cool, yeah, this, what a happy scene this is gonna be. <laughs> From scooping your guts into a plastic bag to this! This game's sick, but I know it's sick, so whatever. <laughs> Maya, you're so cool. She was awesome in Book of Shadows Chapter 2, she was so cool. なんだよ。うん。だからね。シゲニーにせっかくのチャンスを逃してほしくないなって。チャンス。I know you can do it! Scoop my guts into that bag! <laughs> With fervor! <笑>いつも部屋に閉じこもるようになった。Wow. Okay, you have a sad past. They just wanted you to be a good... To live up to the family name, that's all. I've heard that story before. Oh, of course. So that's why you're so twisted. Okay. Hey, don't complain about those free health checkups, okay? Shabberana. a person who darkens and takes pictures of corpses? Okay. ソフクライ。ソフが亡くなってからは毎日がぼんやりとして無気力状態になっていたと思う。もし眉と出会っていなかったら芝居の楽しさもこれからもずっと一緒にいよう。It's going to be really hard to spoon and watch Netflix with a pile of guts, Morishige. That's... <laughs> that would be a little awkward. Oh, that's... that's so creepy. I'm just getting this image of him, like, putting a hairpin on, like, her guts. Oh, it's so gross! Frantically searched the immediate area, but I couldn't find it anywhere. This is really dark and gruesome. 
I'm really creeped out. This is the s most creeped. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> oh no. This is, this is. Well, then again. Oh my god. No, no, not oh my god. More like. Hell yeah, where have you been all game, Kizami? I know, I know you've been dead, but still, I want to see a flashback or something at least. So this is before he becomes the anatomical model, so all the others are still in here then. That sounds like Sachiko's voice. <laughs> wow. Hey. Yeah, you're, you're one to talk calling people merciless, Kizami. Come on, you are the king of merciless. Yeah, because you're a sick freak! And that's why I love you. Heart. Any more or nothing more than balls of pure malice. I got balls of pure malice. <laughs> that was too easy of a joke, come on. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. I know, life's tough, Kizami. As I approached the auditorium, I heard a voice echoing from within. I looked inside and saw a young man standing on the stage wearing the uniform of a different school. He held a plastic bag in his hand, which seemed to be standing in for a co-star. <laughs> <Whoa! laughs> this is very touching.私の君を返してしまったことを悔やんでいる。たとえ、すべての者から非難されようとも、そうすべきだったのだ。こんなにも苦しく君を欲して止まない。今にも胸が張り裂けそうだ。いや。私はすでに狂っているのかもしれない。ああ
思いは日に日に高まって君の方に触れたい君の髪に触れたい君が辛い時はそばに寄り添い支えたいこうして離れた場所からしか愛を語ることができないなんてもし私の手が汚れているというのならすぐに切り落としましょうもし私の目が彼女を汚すというのならすぐに潰してみせましょうだからどうか彼女の手に唇に口づけることをお許しくださいわお、that was that was a really touching scene oh my god this is like he has like her bag of guts and he's holy shit Wow. That was one of the most powerful scenes of the game so far, guaranteed. Holy shit. I think that was a soliloquy from Romeo and Juliet, but I'm not too sure. It seems like it was. It's, it's something from Shakespeare. What is going on? Oops, I accidentally pressed a button. Okay, well, Kizami was just clapping. I accidentally bumped the controller because this controller is finicky as hell. Not a bad performance. I had no idea you were such a skilled bard. Uh, Shige, you should probably get out of there. <laughs> That's true. That's true. ケータイで死体の写真を撮ることだったな。キサラギ学園の森重作太郎。え、you <笑> No way, this is... That doesn't make sense. This is the... This is the one place that really tests what your metal is, right? Like, okay, I'm in another world. I guess they can do whatever I want. No, it doesn't work like that, okay? It doesn't work like that. You do bad things here, you're still a shitty person. That's <laughs> right. Well, I, don't... I guess that kind of makes sense, but at the same time, I think everyone catches your interest that's alive, Kizami. <laughs><笑> すでに俺もその興味対象の一人ということかまあ否定はしないでおこうまあ否定はしないでおこう。Well, <laughs> the ones that are dead don't really have control over themselves, so yeah, there, there is a big difference, Kizami. いや、もうじゃに殺される方がもっと無語いこう。Oh, what a dick. それは。なんだ。お前の知り合いか。それは私でもらおうか。ああ。これはお前の恋人のものだったのか。違う。なら、なぜこれを欲しがる。それは。お前に言う必要はない。I must have struck a nerve as I was suddenly being attacked. Not that he was particularly good at it though. I had no trouble at all dodging. Especially Kizami, yeah, he's... Oh, God. Okay. I tossed the hairpin across the room, then grabbed Morishiga's right arm and began twisting it. Don't <laughs> I placed a knife against his cheek. 
あの髪飾りの持ち主はお前にとってどんな存在だったキザム、you're twisted, I love you! なんでお前にそんなこと答えなくちゃいけないんだ生意気なのは好きじゃない I twisted his arm even farther. <笑>痛そうだなほら早く答えてくれよ<笑>妹みたいな存在でいつも一緒だったへえあの粉砕死体はマユちゃんっていうの Hey don't talk about Mayu like that Kizami you're creepy and I like you but not, not the people I care about okay マユは死んでないマユは死んでない死んでないんだ<笑><笑><笑><笑>何がおかしい何がってお前<笑>あれが死んでないわけないだろう人間なんてものはな腹を人差ししただけで死ぬんだよたったそれだけで死ぬってのに人の形をしていないやつが生きているわけがない<笑>マユは生きてる生きているんだ聞こえたんだ携帯からマユの声が聞こえたんだマユは生きてるだってほらそこにいるじゃないかお前まさかあの<笑>髪飾りだけが見つからなかったんだそういう意味では離せ離せ Clearly attempting to ignore the pain in his arm, Morishige benting and toward his body until I could no longer hold on to him, eventually shoving me out of his way. Well, hey, nice! Blood streamed out from the spot on Morishige's cheek where I'd held the knife. It must have dug into his skin a bit during the struggle. With much effort, he stumbled his way over to where Mayu's hairpin had landed. This <laughs> マユがずっとつけてた髪飾りやっと見つかったよバカバカしいそんなものは自己満足に過ぎないただの独りよがりだその袋の中身は廊下に落ちていたあの肉塊だろだいたいその子が頼んだのか<笑>黙れお前はその行為で許されようとしているだけだ守れなかった罪悪感をごまかそうとしているだけなんだよ。黙れお前は肝心な時に一緒にいなかった。見殺しにしたようなもんだろう。モリシギ was trying to look strong and in control up till now, but his cracks were starting to show. They always do after a time. 彼女は恨んでいるかもしれないな。助けてくれなかったお前を。<笑>ここに来る前にあった子供の霊たちは散々恨み事を言っていたからなきっとそのマユって子もそばにいてお前も早く死ねと言っているかもしれない違うそうじゃない違うねそうかそうだよな俺はマユを守れなかった大切なシゲニーのせいじゃないシゲニーのせいじゃないよ私が私がいけなかったの私があの子たちに同情なんかするから寂しくて寂しくて誰かと話してないとおかしくなりそうで Yeah, you probably should have my that wasn't very smart, but whatever シヌマくんの言葉ちゃんと聞けばよかった Well, you are kind of seeing him right now. Maybe. 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 You're getting really creepy when you're resorting to assisted suicide through psychological manipulation! That's insane! Maya. 
Yeah. Yeah, your voice isn't reaching them, obviously. Morishige stared at my knife for a time, then reached out and grabbed it. <laughs> and just like that, he'd stabbed himself in the chest. Oh my god, he ends up killing himself? That's insane. With what little strength he had remaining, he then pulled the knife from his body. Blood poured from his wound, staining the area around him a deep crimson. And Mayu had to witness it, even though Morishige didn't know she was there. Oh my god. Come on. Oh, there we go. I was waiting for that big scream. Okay, you Jeez. Morishige fell to the floor, his eyes still wide. Once he'd stopped writhing, I slowly walked over to his body. I then removed my knife from his hand and shook the blood from its blade. Kizami, you're not the one to be talking about this kind of thing. It's one of your greatest achievements, isn't it, Kizami? Because you guys are both messed up. Well, that was a really happy extra chapter. That's gonna bring smiles to the faces of children everywhere. Oh my god, that was horrible. Mayu had to witness Morishige killing himself. And then the big soliloquy with Mayu's guts. It was That was really beautiful, actually. It was really... It was, that was a really cool extra chapter. Okay, extra chapter two. Here we go. Martuba. Oh, this one's gonna follow the, follow the Martubas. That's gonna be cool. It was a few days before Ayumi would be released from the hospital. The setting was a dark plashil chamber. Pladial. Truly pladial at that, with various paintings and tapestries lining the walls and ornate, vividly hued candle bras dotting the room. Along with a variety of human and animal shaped objects placed here and there. In short, these were surroundings rife with a sinister and supernatural mystique. Such was the nature of Martuba's tomb, the secret organization of black magic practitioners to which I belonged. And into the, these solemn yet stern environs echoed a low, deep female voice. Yeah, they hate the Yagoda, which is um, Misuto in his group. And so this could be Magari. I might be. There was a slow, heavy cadence to her voice and a degree of archaism to her speak that perfectly conveyed both authority and experience. This was not someone to be questioned. Surrounding me in the sacred space were numerous shadowy figures, each wearing a black robe. We looked an awful lot like the pop culture perception of devil worshippers. Well, you guys, I know they're, you're not devil worshippers, you're practitioners of black magic, but I mean, you pretty much are devil worshippers in the sense that, um, you know, you draw power from things that should not have their power drawn from. Oh. The weight of this news was evident by the sudden emotional reactions of those ar around me. I too was wearing the black robe, though the bits of pale skin peeking through would have made it easy to pick me out of a lineup. Okay, so I think the queen is the last boss that we fought. That's considered the queen. 
There was a palpable sense of excitement throughout the chamber. Hi. I stepped forward. ありがとうございます。この丸ツバの存亡は復興部シャドウズに I had no qualms about talking back to our high and mighty leader, but some fights you just can't win. There was no getting out of this one, so I figured I'd just suck it up. Okay, you go get him, Magadi. Ah, uh, that's right. Just flash your tits at the local community park. I found myself in the local park that night. From atop the jungle gym, I contemplated my situation. I laid myself back under the steel bars of the jungle gym and gazed up at the sky. Stars were particularly bright that night. I could almost make out Naho's wry smile in the sky above as if she'd somehow become a constellation after her passing. Yeah, Magari, we get it, you're sick. I felt alone, unchallenged, and then even the Naho constellation died on me, sliced through by the tail of a shooting star in the dark of night sky. Unfortunately, I was alone no longer. A voice rang out from below me. It was Misuto. When I turned to look, I saw him standing at the bottom of the jungle gym, waving. I said nothing in response, instead brandishing my scythe and leaping from my perch in one swift motion, hoping to catch him off guard and lop off his damned head. He was obviously ready for me, however, casually stopping my advance with a 500 yen umbrella without once displaying the slightest surprise or strain on his face. <laughs> if I had to give him credit for one thing, it would be keeping cool under pressure. My strength is not insubstantial. He had to have been struggling to hold me back, but it didn't show. <laughs> The sight in the plastic umbrella's frame scraped against one, uh, one another with an ear-splitting shing. I had every intention of killing him right then and there, and I made no effort to hide it. Misato, meanwhile, was just smiling back at me, though he had a look in his eyes as well that slightly belied his outward, nonchalant regard for this battle. His black pupil shone red in the dim light. Finally, we each pushed hard enough that our weapons clashed and deflected one another, putting some slight distance between us. <laughs> With a flick of the wrist, I shrank my scythe back into the portable form and sheathed it. I then crossed my arms and smiled. Ah. <laughs> You know what? Luckily, the Book of Shadows didn't get into the Martuba's possession. Because, I mean, goddamn, I don't trust the, the Martubas at all. Misto pointed his 500 yen umbrella at me. Shinozaki <laughs> 
Mizuto huffed derisively. Misuto had his arms crossed as well. Uh, this was about as reluctant a truce as they come. Huh. So she's been supporting Ayumi from the shadows from square one. Like it wasn't, she didn't change her mind halfway through the game. She was just, she's always, okay. That's, that's interesting. Huh. He turned to walk away, but not before chucking a knife in my general direction. It grazed my cheek before embedding itself in the bark of a tree behind me, though I made absolutely no attempts to dodge it, nor did I allow my expression to change even marginally. I smiled widely, drunk on my own insane machinations. The pieces were all falling into place. Wow, jeez, it's much later. What the dog? What? Lying on my back in the bathing area, I thoroughly sized up the Ever After stones I'd stole. Why did you, you just went to the bathing area looking at the Ever After stones? Come on, someone's gonna ask you what the hell that is. What are you gonna say? A charm? All the while, a maid was scrubbing me down to get rid of dead skin cells so I could keep on looking pure and lovely. The maid just flashed me a smile and continued scrubbing. <laughs> She's really enjoying that. <laughs> the vehement scrubbing, the vehement scrubbing is making my body vibrate quite a bit. Between that and my monologuing, I wound up biting my tongue. Immediately, I shot to my feet. <laughs> oh, my, oh, geez. <laughs> Fan service, oh, baby! The res sure enough, when the maid ran her fingers over my body, the resistance they found created sound not unlike that of a freshly cleaned plate. Uh... That was very, that was a very necessary scene. I fell back onto my king-size canopy bed, sprawling out as much as I possibly could. On the floor nearby was a suitcase my butler, Waldo, it's Waldo! Where's Waldo? Here he is, had prepared for me. Waldo was always so courteous and always kept an even tone of voice when addressing me. I turned my head and looked down at the suitcase. I slowly peeled myself off the bed to begin the arduous task of packing for my trip to Heavenly Host. Opened and ready for me, the suitcase contained a number of essentials that Waldo had pre-packed on my behalf. There was a canteen, some store-bought sweet buns, a black robe, some candles, matches, a knife, and a few other assorted survival items. <laughs> Waldo, I could use you. I need a butler. He had two large bottles in his hand. Hi. <sighs> okay, cool. So that's Magadi's story before she met up with Ayumi at the hospital. And also fan service. Yay, cool. Thank you, Extra Chapter 2, Martuba. That was very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> Yeah, anyways, guys, I'm gonna end the episode here. In the next episode, we're gonna do some more extra chapters. I'm gonna make the next episode longer. I think I'm gonna try to do uh, three, four, and five, and then in the one after that, I'll do uh, six, seven, and I guess that's it. I thought there was an eighth one. I thought I unlocked an eighth one. Okay, well, whatever. I'll make two more episodes of extra chapters. The next one will be super long. But yeah, I'm gonna end the episode here. I'll see you in the next one. I hope you're enjoying. Now, keep in mind, this is just kind of like extra information. So it's kind of important, but it's not gonna have like, it's not gonna be linear like the main story. It's just gonna be little like subplots that happened either during, before, or after the main story. I, it's, it'll be hard to tell. So um, yeah, 
it's it's definitely it's different, you know. Um, but it, it will have some cool like little tidbits of certain characters meeting at different times that we didn't get to see during the main story, and hopefully it'll fill in some gaps and make the story more complete. Like seeing Magadi before everything happened was really neat, and also I mean the. <laughs> The first extra chapter was insane with Morishige and Kizami. That was really cool to see how Morishige met his end. Because a lot of people speculated that Morishige didn't die in the original Corpse Party jumping out the window. And so this kind of explains that he didn't die then and explain what happened, which is really neat. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like down below. It helps me out immensely. And as always, guys, peace.